Sunday School leaders, let's look ahead and see what is coming up for this Sunday. We're continuing in our series entitled Game Changer, How to Impact Your World. We're in Session 3, we're looking in Daniel 3, and the title of the lesson is Stand Courageously. The point of the lesson is be ready and willing to stand for God. We have a very familiar story this week. It's the story of the three Hebrew children and their being thrown into the fiery furnace when they refuse to bow down and worship an idol. Like I said, it's a very familiar story. Uh, most children probably uh, have heard this story. Uh, when, we, when we think about this and taking a stand, uh, taking a stand for God uh, in our contemporary culture in the United States is fairly easy. Uh, we've got a uh, kind of a bumper sticker theology. Uh, it used to be honk if you love Jesus. Now that's turned into a Facebook theology of uh, I'm not ashamed to be a Christian and you know you just copy and paste a post. Uh, I think a lot of people in the United States, a lot of Christians at least, think that uh, they're being persecuted because cashiers aren't saying uh, Merry Christmas but they're saying Happy Holidays. Or uh, they feel that they're being persecuted because they can no longer... Uh, say, a prayer at a football game. Uh, these are not examples of persecution. True opposition and persecution is when one's safety or one's life is in danger. And that's what was happening with our three uh, characters in our story this week. So we have this example as well as other biblical examples of those who uh, were persecuted, uh, those whose safety was in danger, and even those who died because of their beliefs. Uh, in the New Testament, we have uh, we see Saul, before his uh, conversion, he persecuted Christians. Uh, we saw that he was there present at uh, the stoning of Stephen. And then after his conversion, Paul, because of his beliefs, was beaten, he was thrown in prison, uh, all kinds of stories there. The early church, uh, just saying the phrase, Jesus is Lord, could carry an immediate death sentence because... The phrase to say was, Caesar is Lord. And so if a soldier came up and asked you who was Lord and had a sword at your throat, the correct answer was, Caesar is Lord. But those who dared to say that Jesus was Lord, was, they were immediately executed. Now, in modern times, we have seen the stories on the news of groups like ISIS, who in the Middle East are hunting down and beheading Christians. We know stories of uh, countries like China, of North Korea, who are not friendly at all to Christians and Christianity. A good resource to kind of keep up to date and keep abreast of uh, those current situations uh, is the Voice of the Martyrs. Their website is persecution.com. I suggest that you go out and read some of the recent stories of persecution around the globe and share some of these with your class. A classic Christian book that deals with persecution throughout the ages is Fox's, and that's F-O-X-E apostrophe S, Fox's Book of Martyrs. Uh, this has a bunch of different stories about Christians throughout the centuries who have been put to death because of their belief. Uh, I think it was around the late 90s, probably around 1999, DC Talk came out with a book. Uh, you may remember it was called Jesus Freaks. They also had a song that went along with that. And it listed, it, it, it gave a bunch of stories of Christians uh, throughout the ages, whether they were early church or contemporary examples of Christians who were put to death because of their faith. Now, I think we should remind uh, our classes this week that while biblical accounts of persecution are certainly real, it's, it's not a thing of the past. It's real and happens every day around the world. So taking a stand for God as we think about that being the point of our lesson, that being the title of our lesson where we're going with this, uh, if we're not willing to lose a little respect, maybe maybe lose a friend or two, uh, maybe endure a little ridicule by taking a stand for God, would we really be able to endure torture and perhaps even lose our life if it came down to it? In the second century, one of the early church fathers uh, named Tertullian uh, wrote this statement. He said, the blood of the martyrs is the seed of the church. I've emailed that to my class this week and asked them to think about that, what that means. And we're going to discuss that in class. I think it implies that uh, the martyrs willing to sacrifice their own lives leads to the conversion of others. Uh, we see this in China where 
the church is being persecuted and Christians are being killed, we see that that is where the church is really, it, it's exploding in numbers. It's an underground church. So what I'd like for you to do this week is to, to take some time and pray for the persecuted church. Pray for those Christians in China and in North Korea. I pray for those who are being hunted down by ISIS. And if you really want to stir up some discussion, maybe some controversy, you know, it, it's not always bad to have some good, healthy discussion where people aren't agreeing with each other, as long as you keep it civil. Anyway, if you want to have some good discussion, even debate, you might discuss the, uh, the recent example of Kim Davis. She's the uh, county clerk in Kentucky who refused to issue marriage licenses to homosexual couples. Was she taking a stand for God, or was she just abusing uh, her right uh, as a Christian? So anyway, something to think about. You may or may not want to discuss that. All right, that's all I have for now. I hope to see you Sunday. Have a great lesson.